Welcome everyone to this video. Today I'm going to walk you through some basic maintenance you can do here in Google Chrome to increase privacy and security as well as optimization to increase performance and customization. Let's get started. To kick things off, let's go up here to the top right corner and click on the little menu and then go down to help and then over to about Google Chrome. This will verify that Chrome is up to date and updates are very, very important because they include security updates as well as optimization and new features. If you are not up to date, it will start to download automatically and then prompt you to restart. Next, let's go over here to where it says extensions and click on this option. Come up here to the top right hand corner and flip on developer mode. And before we do anything, just click on update to make sure the extensions you have are up to date. Now a word on extensions. Extensions are fun and convenient but they are terrible for privacy and security. Even if the extension came from a legitimate source, extensions can be hijacked and exploited. So to that point, I generally recommend that you remove as many extensions as possible. Remove all of them if possible. Only exceptions I would make would be for the standard Google extensions or if you have an extension for your password manager, I would keep those. But again, generally speaking, I recommend you remove as many of them as you can just to increase privacy and security and optimize your web browser to run at its peak efficiency. If there is an extension that you refuse to part ways with, at least come over here and disable it while it's not in use. And that's at least one compromise that you can make. Now I'm going to come back up here to the menu in the top right and go down to settings. And we're going to start over here on the left hand column with you and Google. Now right here you do have an option to turn on sync. This does require that you sign into a Google account. This is convenient, especially if you have multiple devices that you use Chrome on because it will sync all of your information between each one and keep you up to date on all of your devices. The downside is privacy. There are concerns as far as what Google may or may not track when you're signed into your Google account here in the browser, whether or not they're tracking everything you're doing. And they probably are because again, with Google, Chrome is not the product here. You, the user are the product. And so in order to sell you, they have to track as much as possible. And then they sell that to advertisers. So if privacy is a concern, generally speaking, you may not want to sign into this account. That's something that you're going to have to decide. It is obviously more convenient to be signed in and have everything syncing across your devices. One other thing to keep in mind, if you have a device that is not secure, information is being synced to it that's another thing that you need to keep in mind so when turning off syncing you only have to worry about this one device that you're using rather than worrying about all the devices that it's being synced to next if we go to autofill these three options here are very convenient to have they're terrible for security and privacy this has been shown in multiple studies that even though these can be password protected here in the browser when autofilled malicious sites or malicious extensions or other means can grab the data and so generally speaking I recommend you do not use these just type these in don't save them here obviously it's less convenient to do that so if you want to take the risk you can but I would recommend coming in here and removing anything that you have saved I would turn these options off and then if you are using the browser as a password manager you're going to want to switch to a third party option such as key pass or some other options an actual program dedicated to securing your passwords that's encrypted I'll list some options down in the video description but generally speaking turn these options off if you have anything saved in here delete them out after you've backed them up do not use these options if security and privacy is of value to you next let's go to the privacy and security section now the first option we have right here Google Chrome can keep you safe from data breaches bad extensions and more we can click on check now and it's going to check all of these categories some of these we've already gone over we are up to date if you have passwords saved in Chrome it's going to check them against data breaches or known data breaches but this same functionality the same feature can be found in third-party password manager and so you're not losing anything by switching if you find one that has that security. And so this should not be a deterrent as far as switching to a third party. So keep that in mind. Safe browsing. I'm going to come back to this later, but just quickly, we can see that it is enabled. Extensions we've already talked about. It is going to check to see if you have any harmful ones installed, but please keep in mind that even though Google checks, there have been situations where some have fallen through the cracks. And so I would still recommend that you remove as many extensions as possible. Regardless, here Chrome will check to see if you do have any known malicious ones installed. And then this option, device software, you can click on it. You do have the option to check your system for malicious software. You can uncheck the box if you don't want it sent back to Google. 
I would not use this as a replacement to say Malwarebytes or a more dedicated malware scanning solution, but if you want to give it a shot, you can click on find and it will scan your system. Once completed, it will show you the results. It looks like no harmful software was found. So I'm just gonna click the back button. And then if I scroll down underneath privacy and security, the first option is clear browsing data. You can click on this option. It will pull up a menu. It will probably default to basic, but I do recommend you click on advance. It will give you more options. From here, you can select the time Time frame that you need and then additionally you can select what it deletes you can delete the browsing history download history cookies and other site data cookies are used to track you cached images now these next four items you can clear out but it, before you delete your passwords again make sure that you have them backed up in a third-party password manager as well as form data and site settings just be sure especially with these three that you have those backed up somewhere or that you're not going to lose something that you need also please keep in mind that when you delete your history and these other settings here it is still recoverable and so for that reason I do recommend that you encrypt your computer I will drop a link down in the video description on how to do that but basically when you clear the data here you're clearing it for non-tech savvy people to find it anyone who knows how to recover data can still find it on the computer once you have everything set the way you want it you can just click on clear data and it will clear it Next are cookies. So I'm gonna click here on the cookies option. Again, cookies are used to track you. They can be useful. For example, it can prevent you from having to sign in over and over again, or in regards to a shopping website, if you put something in the cart, leave, come back later, it will still be there. So it can be convenient, but again, cookies are used to track you. So it's a privacy concern. The more strict you are on the cookie settings, the more private and secure it is, but the less convenient it is. And so you're gonna to have to kind of figure out what the sweet spot is for you. Most people are going to go with the block third-party cookies in incognito windows and so to get to an incognito window you just click on the menu up here new incognito window and right here it's telling you what it's going to do your browsing history will not be tracked cookies will not be tracked as well as information that is entered but please keep in mind your website activity is still visible especially to your employer school or internet service provider now if you're worried that you're not going to remember to open an incognito window or you don't want to have to do that every time you can get more strict you could block third-party cookies which is more private or just block all cookies and then you can come down here and add exceptions so for example if there's a website you know and trust that you use a lot a shopping website that you use a lot you can add some exceptions down here you can also add exceptions to always block cookies on other sites and that option is right here so right here you can always allow you can always clear cookies for certain websites or you can always block you just come here and click on add type in the website address the URL if you want to include third-party cookies you can do that as well to increase privacy and then click on add additionally here you do have the option to clear cookies anytime you close all windows so that may be an option Option that you want to look at and then I do recommend that you turn on the do not track request but please keep in mind along with this notification that it is completely dependent on the website you are going to as to whether or not they're going to respect this request regardless I would still turn it on and then regarding the preload feature that does use cookies and so if you want to increase privacy you may want to turn this option off but that is up to you scrolling back up let's go back and then we're going to scroll down to security here Chrome offers different settings as far as security while browsing most of you are going to want to use standard. There is an enhanced option, but the downside is it does send your browsing data to Google. So you're gonna to have to decide if you want that. This is basically a babysitting option. I would recommend just using the standard option and educate yourself, babysit yourself. Don't rely on Google, it's more private that way. Additionally, I would scroll down and down here, you're gonna find some useful settings. Always use secure connections. I would definitely flip this on. And then concerning the DNS settings, when you visit websites, certain requests are made and those requests are not always encrypted with standard DNS settings. And so I do recommend changing this. Now I am recording this on a virtual machine and so that's why it's not allowing me to enable it here. So what I'm going to do is pull over Google Chrome from the host machine to show as an example. So right here, you can see that I flipped on use secure DNS. By default, it will probably be on this top option. I would recommend going down here and there will be a drop down menu. Now you can go to custom. There's a lot of different DNS options that you can use out there. Some will advertise as being more secure and private than others. For a simple recommendation, click on the drop down and select Cloudflare. This is a great option you can use to secure and 
encrypt those requests to make sure there are no man in the middle attacks that you will be exploited to. There are a few other options here. The only other one I would point out is this Google Advanced Protection Program. Really, you should only go into this program if you are a target, for example, a public figure, a government official, high ranking member of an organization or a company. This may be something that you want to look into. I'm not going to dive into it because the average user is not going to be the target for this use case. But if you are interested, just click on it. It'll open up a new tab and you can go ahead and click on get started. Next, I'm going to scroll back up and click on the back arrow to get back to the main menu here and then scroll back down. So next thing we need to talk about is site settings. Go ahead and click on that. Now here towards the top, it's going to list permissions. You definitely want to double check these to see what sites are accessing your location, your camera, and your microphone. You can click on it to see a list. And if you don't even want sites requesting access, just click on the don't allow. Down here, it will list sites that are not allowed and currently allowed. It will give you the option to manage them. Again, I do recommend that you do this for your camera as well as your microphone just because these are very sensitive things that websites try to access. Once you've done that, go ahead and click the back arrow. Additionally, I double check the background sync option. Here you will notice that by default, it will allow recently closed sites to finish sending and receiving data. If you don't like that option, if you want to cut it off when you close it, you're going to want to select this option. As usual, you can come down here and add exceptions. You can just click on add to type in the website URLs for not allowed and allowed. I'm going to click the back. Now we've already touched on cookies. This will take you to the same menu we were looking at earlier. So I'm going to click back, but you do want to review JavaScript. If I click on this option here, you can manage and allow or not allow JavaScript. This is a common exploit that is used for malicious behavior, but it's also used on a lot of websites to function correctly. And so what you can do if you want to increase security is you can click on don't allow and then add exceptions here on the allowed list. Or you can do the opposite. You can allow if there's some sites that you know that you don't want to allow it on, you can do that. But you have to remember that when browsing, you may not always know what needs to be added to this list. So the best option, in my opinion, is select the bottom option and then allow it on sites that you know and trust. But please keep in mind, even legitimate websites can be hijacked. When you're done customizing, click the back arrow. You can also manage shown images. You can manage pop-ups right here. Just double check to make sure the bottom option is selected. You can, as always, allow exceptions. And also please keep in mind, there are additional permissions here that I failed to point out. Most of these I wouldn't worry about, but if you want to go through them, you can. But down here on the additional content settings, I would extend this list. And by default, these should be set the way they should be. But if you want to double check, for example, sound, if for example, you don't like that certain websites are playing sound by default or with autoplay, you can mute them here. You can also manage ad settings, though I would not say that this is a substitute to a traditional ad blocker, but you do have the option to block ads on sites that show intrusive or misleading ads. And then if I click back again, insecure content, it is blocked by default, but you can add exceptions. I wouldn't do that, but you can if you truly trust the site. Next, I'm going to click on appearance. You can change the theme. If you click on this option right here, it will pull up some themes. If you find one that you like, you just scroll down till you find it, click on it, click add to Chrome, and you can see that the theme has now changed. If you decide you no longer like it, just click on reset to default. Additionally, you'll have an option to show home button. By default, this will be turned off. If I flip it on, you can notice that the home button is now appearing up here at the top. By default, it will be on this top option, but you do have the option where you can come down here and type in a home page that you want to use. Just type in the URL. You can enable to show bookmarks. I do not have any bookmarks, so it's blank here, but that is the bookmarks bar right there. And then you can change font size, customize fonts, and page zoom as needed. Next, let's go to search engine. Simply put, by default, it will be on Google. If you want to increase privacy, use DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is not perfect, but it is better than Google. You can also use other options if you choose to do so. You can manage search engines by clicking on this option. If you want to change the default, you just click on the little menu, click on make default, or if you need to remove it, just click on delete and then delete again. Next, if I come over here to default web browser, there is an option to make Chrome the default. If you click on it, it's gonna pop up a Windows menu. You're gonna to have to scroll down until you find Google Chrome and click on it, and then click on set default. You'll notice that it did not switch all of them to Google Chrome, and so you may have to come into some individual options and click on them, and then click on switch anyway, click on Chrome, and then okay, and now it is Google Chrome. So you may need to do that for some of these additional ones. That will be up to you if you wanna switch them. Back here in Chrome, we're going to click on on startup 
By default, it will have this top option selected, but you can select any one of these three. It's just a personal preference. I like to select the bottom one and list a specific website that I want to open when I open Google Chrome. I can come over here and click on this option to edit it or remove it, or I can also have multiple tabs open if I'd like to do so. I just click on add new page, type in the URL, and then click on add. Continuing on down here, we do have the option for languages. If you need to add a language, you just click right here and it will give you a list. You just check it and click on add. You can also use spell check or enhance spell check, though keep in mind that enhanced is sent to Google, and then you can enable and disable down here. You can also manage downloads. You can change where a download is saved. By default, it will go to your downloads folder. You can also enable it to ask each time. And here we have accessibility that you can customize as needed. System, the main thing here is by default, it will allow background apps to run. And so if you want to increase performance or you're dealing with slowness, you may want to turn this off. And then when all else fails, you can come down here to the reset and cleanup option. Here it will let you restore default settings. You can uncheck the box for privacy and then click on reset. It will list what actions will be taken and which ones will not. And then this option that we covered earlier, the scan option, you can click on it. It just goes back to that same menu that we used earlier. With all that said and done, we now have Google Chrome the way we want it, peak efficiency and optimization, peak privacy and security. But if you do have any comments or questions as far as Google Chrome, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it. And if you would like to support the channel, go ahead and hit that join button, the subscribe button, and that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.